Uh, hello. Um, we are now broadcasting. Hello. We are live on the internet. Uh, my name is Chris Messina. I work for Neon Mob. That's Mike in the background. Uh, this guy right here. Oh, there we go. He's back. Okay. And um, this guy over here, Jean, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Well, hello, everybody. I'm a French artist, and I did the Codex Fungi uh, Mushrooms cards uh, for, for Neon Mob, which was really fun. And, well, uh, I'm just a freelancer doing photography, graphic design, and, and uh, illustration in, in Bordeaux. So, yeah. And I'm self-taught, so I don't have any credentials such as uh, which school I've been to or stuff like that. Oh, so, so that suggests that you've been doing this for, for a long time. Uh, I mean, when did, you, when did you start getting into this? Um, when... Actually, if it if it is for drawing, I have I started that maybe since I was born or something like that. So I can't really answer that. But um, uh, more professionally, I would say um, when I was a student, so maybe from um, 2004 on, I'd say. Got it. Got it. Um, yeah. Interesting. And so like. <clears throat> What about your, your sort of trajectory through using digital media versus using traditional arts and things like that? So, yeah, as I said in the written interview, um, at first, so it was all traditional, like, uh, like any kid. I was just um, like drawing on paper, and, and that was it. And then I discovered the, um, all the things we, you can do with uh, Photoshop and and other um, photography editing softwares. So I just, uh, I really like, liked it and discovered a whole new world with uh, new techniques such as uh, the way you can play with texture, textures or just, um, you know, like cut images and mix them together or stuff like that. And, and then, oh well, uh, so I was really into it and I grew like uh, further and further away from traditional media but uh, I was spending way too much time on, on the computer so eventually I just got uh, tired of it and I wanted to, to get back to, to traditional media and now it's like uh, I've, like a, fu a full circle and you go back to it and it, it becomes way a lot better than what it, what it was uh, at the beginning. What was, um, you know, you, you mentioned that you felt like you were spending a little too much time on the computer. Like, how was that affecting your, your process or your way of thinking about art and the way that you produced it? Uh, that's a tough question. Um, I, I don't really know. It's like, uh, it doesn't, like the, the imagination doesn't really change whether you're in the front of a computer or in front of your paper, but um, the computer kind of uh, makes everything fuzzy and uh, you lose more concentration and you're like more likely to go um, in the clouds, stuff like that, so it's way easier to focus when you're in front of your paper. Got it. Uh, also, um, just for folks who are joining us, um, we do have a question and answer app. Uh, I have no idea what it looks like for you guys. Um, we are still figuring this out. By the way, this is our second Hangout ever. Um, so we're, we're sort of like figuring it out as we go. But if you do have questions along the way that you'd like Jean to answer, um, you can just add them to the Q&A. Uh, Jean, do you see that in the left-hand side there? You got a little Q&A button? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so if you turn that on, I you should this. get yeah. some questions. OK, so. Oh, great. OK. Uh, so right now we're answering Doodle's question, which is, is this thing on? And the answer is yes. Uh, hopefully she's actually here with us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've answered that question. Um, and also, you know, Jean, we can take this like however you like to go, um, <clears throat> whether we want to answer questions now or you want to like keep talking and so on. So, so anyways, I guess to get back to like, you know, the, the, the answer that you just provided about sort of like getting lost in the clouds and so on. Um, how do you ground yourself yeah. when you're maybe away from the computer? You know, when you're trying to come up with ideas or things like that, um, inspiration. Um, yeah. The good, the good thing with uh, having uh, taken so much time lost in the clouds is uh, that now my my imagination. I don't have to to do any any special efforts to to make it happen. Just it flows naturally. So. 
Um, so if I want to create something, I will ha I will really quickly uh, get some ideas and get all the stuff together and the, the concepts, the, all the, the way I, I make the stories, etc. And uh, so the only thing I need now is um, training my focus and uh, and like, but it's not something that has to do with art. It it, uh, it comes in handy when I, I get back to creative stuff. But it's just training with uh, you know like doing sports, yoga or whatever. So it's a matter of just practice over time. Yeah. And what what sorts of things Actually, are you doing? Yes. I mean, like, you know, when you talk about like practice, are there certain techniques or tools or things like that that you've used uh, that you find are, are particularly effective from a creative perspective? Uh, um, I don't. It's really like I don't pay much attention when I, I get to it. I, I just uh, I take my paper. I, I start to, to to do some sketches and and that's it. So uh, I'm not really good for for that. I don't really know what's going on actually. I should pay more attention, but yeah. <laughs> well, all right. So let's take this um, this question from um, Zhao, um, which I may have pronounced wrong. Um, where did you get the fungi? Why is it a codex? Where did this whole sort of concept <laughs> come from? You know, obviously, like today we've released your set. Um, people seem to really be enjoying it so far. Um, I know I love it. My wife loves oh. it. Um, but you know, there's a lot of pieces in there. Thanks to your wife. In your, in your interview, but you know. Um, what was what was your process there? How did you sort of like you know drive through that? So yeah, I, I was as I was saying in the in the interview, um, I was uh, for my studies I was studying uh, the the works of uh, Japanese artist uh, Murakami Takashi, uh, who made something about uh, mushrooms, and then uh, at that time I I was reading what was his inspiration for it, and I was uh, like um, becoming aware of what uh, mushrooms means mean to humans. I mean, they they are not just uh, edible things. Uh, you have a kind of uh, so mystical or magical forest thing that goes with them. Like if if you just walk into the forest and you see mushrooms, like you know, you like a kid, you're like, oh, that's awesome. It's, it's like it has like so many different shapes, and I, I don't know. It's just weird. It's like something that. Uh, Grow out of, of the soil or out of a tree, and it just go on like that. And I don't know; it's it's really weird to me. So there's something really magical about it. So I I knew from that time on that I I would have to to um to draw mushrooms at a certain time. And well, when I contacted you guys, I I was thinking about uh, a set of cards, and I was just like, oh, this is the perfect time to to get some mushrooms in in, in my stuff. So just went on like that. Huh, that's really interesting. So how did you, I'm also just, how did you discover this Japanese artist? Uh, well, actually, I was doing my uh, my research for, for the, mem the memoir of my uh, master's degree on this uh, particular artist, so it was just part of my studies. Mm -hmm, I see, I see. And so, uh, you know, now that the set has been released, um, and now that it's out there, and obviously, you know, you finished it some time ago, how do you, how do you feel about the work? How do you feel about what you produced? And... Um, you know, what are you hoping that people sort of get out of it? Well, um, what I want them to to get out of it is um, feel the the eerie thing uh, that is really particular to to the mushrooms, and also, um, uh, yeah, um, get them wanting to 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 connect with the forest a little bit more, like just wandering more, take more time to. To, to spend in the in the woods, and um, yeah, and actually, what I think about the set is uh, I really like it. Like uh, today, I just went to to buy a few a few sets uh, just to see how it was going, and I really enjoyed uh, the, the result. Uh, I mean, there's I had a, a just a, a little series of, of mushrooms, and they were all so different, and yet, uh, you know. Like it has a really cohesive uh, appearance, but um, but they really have each of them have their their uniqueness, and I really like that. And uh, you know, it's funny too since like, you created the set, right? So you know all the content, and yet it's still sort of new yeah. and interesting to look at. That's really awesome. Um, yeah. 
you know, I guess, you know, I, I guess one thing that, that, that occurs to me, given what you said about sort of wanting to move away from the computer and being, you know, like spending so much time on it, um, that, you know, your technique uh, for this set obviously was a little more, uh, you know, of the old school like technique. It was uh, sort of watercolor and pen and drawing. Um, in some ways, you know, and, and, and the message that you want with it also is sort of to um, go out to the woods, go out to the forest. I mean, is this sort of like, you know, a message that you're providing to yourself, sort of like a, a way of like thinking about um, or reflecting on your own time, or is this sort of a message that you're hoping that other people receive because of the experience that you've had? Um... No, it's just, uh, for me, it's, it has nothing to do with what I say. It's just, I don't know, but personally, I, I really enjoy walking. It's like every time I walk, if anything uh, is wrong in my life, it goes well. There's something a bit magical about just walking and walking in the forest. I don't know. I, it, it may be just something that is uh, personal, but... Um, um, like just looking at the the leaves, you know, with the the wind rustling through through the leaves, it's something to, to me it's one of the most beautiful things that we can see. And it's, yet it's so simple that maybe nobody really like pays a, a attention to it. So uh, just for that, n not for the for the inspiration, but just for the time you share with the, your environment, I think it, it's great. Mm. Got it. So, you know, uh, one of the things that we had, we had um, I guess we'll sort of finish out this question. Um, where did the idea of a codex come from? Like, what does that mean to you, and is that something that's, like, you know, familiar to you, or is, you know, why, why did you use that concept? Um, yeah, for well, Joe. Um, the idea of, of a codex was, uh, first, I wanted to have a Latin name because uh, all the, the cards uh, have the, 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 the species of, uh, the, written in, in Latin, so I wanted a Latin title for the whole set. And so a codex was um, a reference to all the, the, the old uh, manuscripts that you can find uh, on a very wide range of subjects from the, like the, really like the, pre the precursors of, um, of today's scientists, like people like bo botanical uh, scientists who just went around the world and just collected a uh, huge, uh, huge array of, uh, of species and just drew them on, on a book and made these kind of uh, little encyclopedias. So I wanted to have that feeling for the, um, the collection because these, pe these people obviously were collectors of knowledge, but still. Got it, got it. Oh, that's very interesting. So one of the things that we had talked about doing was actually having you demonstrate, um, or at least show us some of your process, um, I guess, in Photoshop. So do you want to yeah. share your screen and sort of give us a sense for, for what you did in producing this set? Yes, yes. Uh, OK, so I'm going to uh, yeah, screen share. So you, you're going to have to see my computer and all the stuff <laughs> that's in. OK, uh, OK, that's it. Oh, there we are. OK. <laughs> yep, I see it. OK, OK. So Photoshop. So. This is um, the original artwork, you see, so it's just... Um, wait, wait, we're only seeing page. Chrome, we're not seeing Photoshop. What? Oh, shit, sorry. Um, let me try again. Uh -huh. Screen share, yeah, so it was, what option was it? Uh, uh, can you show your desktop? Okay, I think I got it now, okay, tell yeah. me. Okay. okay, cool. So this is uh, typically one of the... Um, uh, the or original artwork I did, so you have the, the whole black and white. Oh, hold painting. on a second. So for some reason, uh, there's a still frame of me in your Photoshop. Can you go to like a different document in Photoshop and... <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> it's stuck. But yeah, try like, yeah, minimizing it. There we go. Uh, okay. okay. Wait, I think it... go back up again. This is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, I will try an another option. Just wait. Uh, maybe with just sharing the. Uh, now. Okay, let's do it again. No. I don't know what's going on there. 
Maybe uh, maybe once you maybe if you close Photoshop and then try launch like doing screen sharing and then launching Photoshop. Okay. Really strange. Okay, I will try. So, sorry for that. I mean, we had a try last Friday, and it was just okay. So I, I know. know. It's really <laughs> well, like I said, this is a very experimental uh, experience. Yeah. So, how? Um, okay, does it work now? Okay, just one screen share. We'll go ahead and try once more. Okay. Okay. And. Uh, no, it's still kind of blinking for me. Okay, but now now I don't see myself anymore. Okay, but what do you see Photoshop? I yeah. see Photoshop. Yep. Go ahead and try to open Ooh. that file again. And see. Okay. So. Uh, okay. And uh, I had another one, which was. Uh, okay, this one is the original. So, do you see the the painting? Yeah. The no. black and white. One no, I mean I, I can see that it's open. I can see that there's a layer. Um, I'm wondering why like it's like your video card is out of memory or something crazy. Um, I don't think so. Last time the only difference was uh, we were on the I, I wasn't on the the browser for the, the hangout, so yeah, it has something to do with that. I don't know. Interesting, interesting. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Well, yeah. uh, maybe I can show you if it's not in Photoshop, like in the in the basic viewing stuff. Uh, sure, sure. I will try. So, okay. do you see my something? Or? We still see Photoshop. Okay, I have closed it, so it's not. Really... Okay. Um, sorry. And yeah. Um, uh huh. This is kind of embarrassing, but yeah. <laughs> don't worry. About <laughs> <it>. <laughs> okay, whatever. I will. Uh, no, no. You know, I can also um, I can do a screen share and I can show the um, the files that you sent. Oh, you, oh yeah, yeah. You have the files, so please. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I will let let you do the job. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. This could be terrifying. This may be the worst idea ever also, but all right, let's try this. So let's see. So that's this. OK. Let's see. OK. Can you see this? Yes. Yes, yes. All right. Let's see how this goes. OK. All right. Okay, yeah. So this is uh, the original painting, just um, a mix of um, I don't know how you you say it in English. It's like a, a small stick of ink. Uh, it's a J Japanese stick. It's like um, Indian ink, more or less, mm -hmm. and just an, uh, a regular pen, a small one. Got it. Uh, and like a like a gouache or like a, like an underpainting. Uh, no, it's just like I do first. I do the the whole thing on pencils, and then I get uh, all the the ink with the you know the very fine pens such as yeah. uh, zero dot zero five, yeah, or something something like that. And then I I get on with the the whole uh, shading stuff, which is just uh, well brushes and that's it. And then yeah, so the colors uh, mm -hmm. it's pure Photoshop. So I just scan the original one. I um, put it in Photoshop and I just uh, start to to add a layer for for the colors. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, la as you see it, it's just uh, maybe t yeah two two colors or three max. Yeah. So yeah, and this one was just uh, you had you add another layer of um, of the original painting to make to make the contrast uh, higher, mm. and then yeah some background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. just uh, a big work of uh, you know get, getting the um, the background separated from the front uh, the front thing. It's, it's mm -hmm. just it takes a lot of time, even if it's simple. What was so? Help me understand, like okay. when this. Okay, so this is the inversion. Is that right? Uh, yeah, actually, it's just the whole process uh, for making the the frame, the wooden frame that we, you will find on uh, every card. Mm -hmm. So 
so yeah, I wanted to have uh, for the wood part. I wanted to have it in negative, but obviously not uh, the, the leaves. So I just let the leaves uh, normal and had the, the other thing in um, in negative, and then add, add some colors and yeah, and just make it like that as a frame. Got it. And the final step was just uh, to open the the file in um, in Lightroom. So nice. if you don't know it, it's, uh, it's a, at the beginning it was just a, a plugin for Photoshop, and now it's a separate software. And because I have the, the habit of using it for my for my photographies, I, I really like it to to put uh, the final um, you know the final little yes. color twist or just um, work the texture out of make everything come together as a really uh, cohesive uh, picture. So mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. Hmm. That's great. Uh, and then this is the final piece here. Yeah. 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 So it's it's really like uh, it's not something that is really obvious, but to me it, it means a lot. Just this final step. Can yeah. you g like go back and forth between the the two pictures? The first and the last. Uh, not the the first, but just the one before the thirteenth. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see there's like a nice sort of like warmth that sort of is yeah, brought out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then like the whole sort of piece comes together uh, and there's less yeah. contrast or less like hue shift between the border and the, the piece. Yeah. yeah. The, the sort thing, of like look. Yeah, my, my secret for the colors is always um, you for all the shadows you, you add a little a little bit of um, dark pur purple and mm -hmm. for the um, for the bright uh, parts, it's just um, yellow orange ish mm. to have a kind of um, sunset feeling. Yeah, you know, now that I'm looking at this, I think it's so interesting to you know look at the eyes, <clears throat> which almost appear to be glowing. Which you know, you, yeah. can, you can imagine being walking to the forest and seeing like you know whether they're mushrooms or whatever, like things glistening, sort of looking at you. I I hadn't quite you know appreciated that so closely here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's Hello. awesome. Um, one of the things that I, you know, since since I'm I'm doing screen share now, um, I wanted to talk to you about is your website. That is right. The dash. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. Um, the, the, yeah. 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 Let me see how we're doing over here. Okay, we're good over here. Um, so especially in uh, your Behance portfolio. Uh, you've got this really interesting project, which I which I mentioned in the interview, but I think. You know, it's obviously since we have, we have video, um, we can talk about this here. Um, yeah. You know, you did this really interesting thing where you attempted to illustrate sounds, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I wanna I wanna sort of go through and show some of these, but I'm really curious about you know your process here, whether this was a different process than uh, the one you used elsewhere. Um, so so you know, for example, I'm gonna try and play this and see how this goes. But so you have this sound. Right. Okay, so that's the sound, and then this is your illustration of that sound, right? Yes. Okay. Let's look at some other ones. There's some crazy, crazy stuff in here. I really want to know, like, where you came up. <laughs> Let's see. Uh... That's awesome. <laughs> it's so weird. I mean, so what 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 is going on here? Like, how you know where did these sounds come from? How did you visualize this stuff? Tell me about this. Okay, so um, basically, when I, when, when I was a child, you want to turn off the screen share? We can go back to video for you. Oh, there we go. Okay. In that space. <laughs> um, can you see my face? Actually, like uh, turn off screen share. Uh, okay, no. Hello. Uh, okay, no. Yeah. And All right. It's coming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is amazing. My God. <laughs> so tippy. Well. Uh, okay. All right. Just talk. Just talk. Okay. So, basically, um, when I when I was a kid, uh, I used to just you know listen to music and. Close my eyes and I will have something like a landscape um, 
like instantly uh, sh showing up in my mind. So it's, it was just like that. And I had forgotten this like completely for years and years. And like when I did this project, I, I remembered that. I was like, oh, maybe I should do something like that. And well, I, I'm a musician too really ser seriously but still I do music so I love uh, I like tweaking sounds and making music and I was like I should do something uh, using sounds uh, as the basic uh, material so I just uh, recorded a few so sounds that I, I liked and also asked a few friends for, for songs uh, so sounds that, that they liked and I was just um, I made the, this, uh, this whole process of uh, first you listen to the sound you close your eyes and like three times, first time you just get the general uh, mood, colors or feeling. Then uh, second time it's like um, um, well, it gets more precise but you can't see any character. And this, uh, the third time it's like you decide that whatever comes to your mind you won't cheat. That's why what, that's what it's so weird. You won't cheat what comes to you. So. Uh, that, that's why it's so weird. Like I have the sound and I can't cheat. Even if I have a weird idea, I will be like, uh, okay, anyway. So no, no self censorship. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Japanese friend who has a really weird voice. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I just find this so interesting. So did you use a very similar technique here that you did with uh, the Codis fungi? No, no, no. Uh, for, for for the mushrooms, I was basically just um, working really quick. Like like, a, like I said, it was something like six weeks straight, almost no day off, and just mm. uh, you know pure pure work. I didn't listen to music at all. I was really like I, I wanted to do the whole stuff in in one blow. Well, a very long blow, but still. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you have a favorite amongst uh, this whole collection here? Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, like the mushrooms or the? Uh, the sorry, no, the, uh, the soundscapes. Uh, maybe the first because I'm the most used to to, to it, so well, I don't know. And yeah. also the the monk like uh, the third one. Yeah. Uh, it's it's like an origami, but yeah, this one with the fishes. Yeah. Yeah, it's just so interesting. Um, interesting. So let's see. While we're here, do you is there any other work that you'd like to to talk about real quick? Um, well, let me see. <laughs> uh, you should choose for me because uh, <laughs> I'm really bad at picking it. Yeah. Well, how about this? This one's kind of interesting. I think these characters. So what is what is this? This is about. Like okay. So, yeah. Um, Perfectly French. I, I can't remember when I did like I started to to make characters like that, but um, over the years I really liked them more and more, and I wanted to do something with them. So last year, uh, I tried to well, I started to make a, a comics, and like everything on my own, I I couldn't sleep for one night, so I just had like uh, ten. Ten tomes worth of scenario coming to my mind, and I decided to to, to like to well to get on with it. But uh, I worked a lot on it, uh, way too much. And at the eleventh page, which was quite a lot, I just uh, like my, my my brain completely froze and my computer too. So like it was completely broken. I was without the computer for three months. <laughs> wow. And so, so yeah. So I decided that it was really time to, to let it go, and maybe it was something that I, I would have to do with, with someone else to really like uh, make it uh, to, to, to the end anyway. But it was interesting because it was really like the first time I, I tried to, to make something uh, huge like that. Because it was uh, a comic, so I had to, to, to write the story, make the characters, uh, create the whole world. And even uh, I was also making the, the original soundtrack. Like I want you to have a, a comic with uh, a CD. Mm. 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 I mean, this this also seems to like be perfectly timed for November, of course, which uh, both Mike and I are, are, are yeah. to, uh, support. One of us is doing better than the other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay, let's see. Let's see if we can go back and um, turn off screen sharing now. Um, I think. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay, um, let me see if we got any questions and answers. Okay. Great. So Doodles is all set. You can see it. Um, yeah. Okay. Wait, Doodles already has all 100 pieces? Oh, my God. No. That's amazing. All right, we are going what? to... And yes. Like, for, no, no way. How can you do it in just one day? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a, in two hours, actually. Is. <laughs> uh, two hours. My God. <laughs> um, so, uh, Jean, I don't know if you want to close out of Photoshop or something. Your computer might be running a little low on... Memory, whatever. Um, actually, I, I've closed everything except for the, the, the software, so I don't oh. really know why it's not going okay. back. Well, we have audio, so we'll just go with audio. That's fine. Um, yeah, but so, you know, for Doodle's question here, um, you have a favorite piece out of the set? You know, one of the stories that you felt was the most interesting to you? Um, you know, Doodle's obviously has pr probably found um, some of the interesting ones, and her favorite, of course, is Metafungus Fortuna. Yeah, uh, well, first, Doodles, I think you're really uh, lucky because I don't know what they wrote, actually, in the description, so I am still ha I still have a lot to find out, so <laughs> that's why I'm collecting the set, too. <laughs> it's funny because you put all the info, like, if it's edible or not, which I, I think is really cool because uh, you can connect it with the, the real world, like, you, you have this card and you have this il illustration, and then you have some info and you can go, can go into the forest and see if, it's, uh, if you can eat it or not, so... That was really cool, I thought. And as for my favorite card, I don't have any, of course. Hmm. Um, there are a few that I don't really like, but most of them I really, I really enjoy making them. So uh, maybe the 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 most rare one ones uh, were the the ones which with which I, I had the, the most pleasure because uh, I was free. It wasn't um, a species that actually exists, so I could just make up anything. So, yeah, and yeah, the Fortuna one, I, it was really cool to do, yeah. Interesting. Um, all right, cool. Um, so, you know, I'm curious about, you know, what's next for you. You mentioned that you're obviously a freelance illustrator right now. Um, do you have other big projects that are working that you're working on right now, um, other types of, of things that you have going on that you want to tell people about? Um, I just got featured in a, in a book uh, that is released worldwide, so if you want to have a check, it's just one picture in a really huge book, but uh, I think, well, the rest of it, you should like it, especially if you like uh, Neon Bob, because um, they have so many good artists, so it's um, uh, the Sticker Bomb series, so Sticker, Sticker Bomb, just, uh, I don't think there is any space, from the, the SRK, and it's basically basically a huge collection of uh, of stickers uh, from a lot of different people from all around the world. So it's pretty cool. And What's the? Is there a link for that? Besides that, yeah. Sorry. Is there a link for that? Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Just wait a minute. I will find it. So just have to go to the the srk.com. I think I will try. Yeah. Yes, it works. So, yeah, www.thesrk.com. Just no dash, no space. Sorry, it's what.com. Oh, there's okay. chat. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, where is the chat? Can I answer? No. Yep. <laughs> Over on the left uh, hand side. Okay, no. I, I, I can't seem to, to, to write anything anywhere, so... Ah, no, yeah, okay, I found, I found it, so... Yeah. Hello, Liam. Yeah. Ah, uh, there we go. VSRK.com. Yeah. Got it. Right. And yeah, besides that, just a few like um, well, n normal work such as um, a few business cards or making some illustrations for events or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And also, I had my first uh, big commission for painting um, something pretty big, like uh, one meter tall. Uh, I don't know how it is in, um, yeah, like in, three feet tall. in inches, but yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. So I'm looking at it now. Where, where should I be looking? On the SRK. Uh, okay, I can see it. So it's just in the in the shop, I guess. 
Let's see. Okay, I'm going to go to the shop. So, oh, profiles. Sticker bomb. Sticker bomb. Uh, shop and sticker bomb. Yeah, you had one. Yeah, so it's the the XL one. I think it's something in the in the. Oh, maybe they 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 don't have it yet. Okay, so you can find it in uh in your local bookshop, but they they don't have it. Ah, okay, so it'll be coming out soon. Got yeah, it. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I saw it in France, so I think that in California or anywhere else, it, sh it should be okay. So yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so we got another question from Benjamin. Um, his question is, um, you know, I don't know how long you've been using um, me on Mob so far, but um, that's lovely. Okay, this guy's going to be a good check. Okay. Um, do you have any other pieces or sets on the Mob that you find interesting or that you, you've enjoyed so far? Other artists or yes. creators? Um, the first one I started it was uh, Configura, and mm -hmm. I, I really love it. Like the, the whole style reminds me of, I don't know if you if you know him, uh, Mobius. Mm -hmm. He's yeah, Mobius. Old school yeah. French artist, yeah. So, yeah. You, you know, with really clean lines and, and nice colors, uh, I, I really dug his style, really. And then uh, the Tinker's design, because obviously I love everything that is done uh, on paper. So you have uh, the whole uh, watercolor feeling that is just awesome. And I, I don't have any cards for the, the Bat Seeds collection, but mm. it, it, it really looks great. So yeah. And also the polygonal one, um, which is really something else, but magnificent, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we're looking at a computer right here. Um, you mentioned, let's see, sets. Oh, you, have, you got 90, 99. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that happened. Uh, uh, Plato is a great set, very small, but very nice. Um, yeah, the Tinker's design, you get yeah. time to get another one for us. Um, I mean, it's true. I mean, they're all just so good and so different. Um, and now we have, you know, of course, your set, uh, which, is, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, awesome. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing now. Crazy. Okay. All right. So um, I think we're we're about rounding up our our time here. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to sort of talk about or address while while we have you here, or anything else you want to say to the Amal community, or you know, to sort of I know we sort of got into this in your interview a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, about your thoughts on digital art, the future of digital art. Um, and you know, where as a sort of creator, you think this is going to go? You know, what, what's your sense for what you're seeing out there in the art world now, whether it's online or whether it's just in the real world? Well, uh, in the real world, I don't really know because the the few stuff that that I did with galleries, uh, it's it's funny because you you get to meet the people in real, but um, I don't know. It doesn't draws many people to actually really talk with you and. Ask inter inter interesting things. There's something a bit weird. Maybe it's the whole uh, gallery mood that I don't really like. But anyway, but what is cool about digital art is just like you can share it with everyone, like uh, anywhere in the world. And it's uh, well, like on Neon Mob, you you can just uh, like go on discover many many artists, just uh, you know, uh, skipping through pages and and making your making your own way and. Yeah, I was a bit curious uh, at the beginning for the, the whole concept of Neon Mob. I didn't really know how it was going to work, or I like I wasn't using it as as a player. So now I'm using it as a as a collector, and I don't know. It, it really grew on me more and more with time, and I I think it's really great. It's really a, like a, a really innovative way to enjoy art and illustration. So yeah, you did really a good job. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's sort of you know how I came to it as well. Um, you know, having been someone that has always collected things, I've you know created stuff you know, a long time ago. Um, it's been a long time since I've done really, you know art, but uh, that's sort of what I grew up doing. And um, yeah. you know, I don't know. It just I think it's really interesting. And I think that you know one of your other points in the interview that you brought up, which I thought was a really excellent point, and something that I think that we're constantly trying to figure out how to do better um, with is you know on the one hand. 
how do we create a great relationship between creators and the collectors of the art, the people who appreciate the art, and then how do we also give the art its proper kind of attention, its proper due, in other words, so that when people come to the site and they collect these pieces, you know, as you suggested, they take time to actually look at the textures, to look at the richness of the art, yeah. that's and the effort that's gone into it. Um, you know, and I think that uh, that's a really good, not only a good observation, but a good point that, that we care a lot about. I mean, there's there's a great deal of interest and fun that comes from kind of like the aspect of collecting and completing sets and getting, you know, prints that you haven't had before. But yeah. there's another part of it which I think is very important to us, which is also making sure that the art isn't lost in that process or isn't lost in some of the game aspects of, of the site. So I think we're constantly finding the balance there. Um, and, you know, part of it is, is, of course, by having conversations like this, um, you know, with, you know, the people who are putting this stuff up there, who are creating this stuff. And I think it's just fascinating to hear about, you know, the fact that you created this set in six days um, and now it's something that all these people can get to, you know, enjoy. Yeah, six weeks. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, six weeks. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, six well. weeks. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think the whole thing uh, about not getting too much involved in the in the co co collection stuff and get, like forgetting about the art is uh, is not an article to Neon Mob. Like if you think about it, there's uh, this huge uh, debate about uh, how we should pay uh, musicians because now it's just like everyone. Uh, downloads uh, f free stuff like no, well, it's not free, it's uh, p pirated, but still. And so you have um, many different um, options. Like, do we want to have something like you pay for a whole and then the money gets um, shared uh, between the artists? And there's some really interesting questions uh, going around with that. But, but the thing that uh, because it's so easy to get them. Um, you just like you listen to it to, to it and you don't really get into it it's like uh when i was a kid there wasn't anything on the internet or you ha you you would have to to wait uh, maybe something like one one week to have a single track which is uh, completely awesome and then you would just uh buy cd's and once you bought it you just you will have to to listen to it because uh there's, you have the object that you like with all the, the cover art and all the stuff and you take time to, to discover it and sometimes uh, well you, you have the first um, music that you instantly love and there's no doubt about, about them but because you, you, you listen the other um, you, you grow like more and more uh, aware of everything that was put in them and it's a good thing because uh, you get much more details and discover a lot of things about actually even making music by the way it's done and it's the, the same thing with the neon mob because uh, if you just uh, like skip through images and, and like yeah I like it okay let's see something else you will miss all the little things that are really like uh, um, giving you much more than just uh, looking at a picture yeah, I think that's exactly right. I mean, I think, you know, in the age of, like, you know, Twitter and Pinterest, there's yep. a very sort of ephemeral relationship that people end up having to art, which, you know, makes it somewhat more disposable. And I think that there's an interesting uh, opportunity there to maybe redefine the relationship that people have to digital art. You know, like you're saying, like, because of the, you know, you know if you were going to, like, download music several years ago, it would have taken you days or weeks or whatever to get a full album. Yeah. <laughs> and so by the time, you know, you had to sort of like pick very, you know, carefully um, when you when you decided to download something because it would just take so much effort and so much bandwidth. And now yeah. you, know, you get these great pieces of art that are like high resolution, high fidelity, you know, in moments. And you consume it and you move on. And I think that there's something that, that um, we're losing in that exchange. And it's not entirely clear what exactly it is, but um, I think it's something that we're, we're very conscious of. Um, yeah. So I mean, speaking of that, I mean, you know, are, would you be interested in doing another set at some point? Actually, at the beginning, it was like it was really tiring. So I was, <laughs> of course, really happy to have done it. But I was like, yeah. okay, I don't think I, I would ever do this again. But uh, lately, I was like, I don't know. I was looking at other sets, and I was like, oh, okay, maybe one day something really different. Uh, I mean, in style. And yeah, why not? Actually, why not? <laughs> That's great. Would be a pleasure. Yeah.
Yeah. Well, uh, look, John, it's been great talking to you uh, today, and I think um, we've, we've come up to the end of our broadcast. Um, but, you know, I hope to talk to you again soon and uh, be in touch and maybe find uh, another set on the site someday for you to do. Yeah, well, thank you, everybody, and thank you, Mike and, and Chris. Uh, it's, really, it's, it's been really great working with you and all, the, all these things, the hangout and all the stuff. So, yeah, thank you for everything. Awesome. All right, we'll chat soon. See ya. Yeah, see you. Goodbye.